hello there viewer back for another beer review eh well i've got another good one for you and it's one of the guys uh one of these guys i should say uh iron pier and i was looking at this it is quite small for my funny eyes to see but it's not one of these ones do, do, do. i think i said this yesterday but i think Oh uh, yeah, that's the the good one, cast iron stout, the middle one. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can he see it, Captain? But anyway, huge plug to these guys. Uh, the two guys that run it are James and Charlie. I think James is the brewer, if I remember rightly. So he's a nice guy. Cheers to you, my dude. Um, thank you for showing us round the other day. This is the. Uh, this is the one that I kind of was trying to get a three, a trifecta going, and I couldn't decide on my final beer. Um, and so James said, if I had a choice, I would go for one of these. So I went, you know what, mate? You're the brewer, so I'm going to go with you. So we have got this bad boy, and it's not focusing once again. Uh, but it's called From the Wave. Come on, dude. There we go. And it's a West Coast IPA at six and a half or 6.4. Um, and there is a local landmark, uh, the bridge. It's not actually in Gravesend, um, but that is the, the bridge, I guess, going over the, the Medway, shall we say. Um, here we go. Uh, from the wave, citrus hops and a hint of malty sweetness and piney bit of finish, inspired by classic West Coast IPAs. Um, the painting was done uh, by Duncan Grant, who oh, I said the other day. Let's see what we get in here. So we've got some wheat in here. Uh, the rest is hops uh, and yeast, which is cool. All they say, or all I could work out is. This is made um, with an obscene amount of American hops. That's what they said. Um, but yeah, I think that is cool. And I don't know about you, dear viewer, but things to me look much better on a big can. I'm a very, I'm a man for a big can. Uh, and this is only a 440, but it could be even better. Actually, while we're speaking about cans, and you guys can have a look at this kind of amazing artwork by Duncan Grant, um, I was in the supermarket, and um, a while ago I noticed that um, Budweiser, I think they were doing it for the World Cup football maybe, but Budweiser had released uh, a pint can, so that's 568 millilitres. Uh, an imperial pint. Um, and Guinness said something on, uh, I saw a new style of can and it said, oh, perfect for a pint glass. And then when I looked at it, it wasn't a pint. It was like some weird number, like 520 something. And I was like, okay, well, they're leaving a little bit at the top for the head, like Guinness is. And then I was thinking, so all these years, I've never actually had a pint of Guinness. I've had under a pint and that much head. So I've never had a pint of Guinness, a pure pint. Am I being mad? Is that, does that sound fanatical? Makes you think though, doesn't it? Makes you think. Right, um, Big Chunkers is, is still downstairs. So I am going to be using the normal tasting glass. Do a quick pressure test. I didn't think there'd be any problems with this beer. Um, and yesterday we managed to fill it to the brim. So let's see where we go today. Now, IPAs sometimes have a big head. This one, no, not at all. Wow, I'm going to have to force some head on it. <laughs> Well, I needn't have worried. It's been in the fridge, but yeah, I'm not, I wasn't sure about that. Look at that. I was talking about big heads and, that, and then I've got hardly any 
I've got a fingernails head on this bad boy. But instantly what I can see is the orange colour, um, which basically suggests it's a good IPA. Um, there's a way of thinking. If your IPA is really too light, like a straw colour, instead of like an ambery orange kind of colour, um, it's not so good. Um, and I, I think this is mainly due to the amount of crystal malt they put in here. So, oh, wow. I don't know what the hops are in here, but that's like orange. It smells very orangey, orange juicy. Simcoe, maybe? Something along those lines? Or maybe that new one, Nectar, Nectarina? Or Mandarina Bavaria? There's loads to choose from. But definitely citrus. Wow. Um, I'm not getting the pine, though. I'm not getting the resinous kind of thing going on. But yeah, let's let's get a picture with this uh, this artwork. We'll do it this way uh, today. Ooh, there we go. No, there we go. Something along those lines, and then that comes back a bit, and then I'm in the middle, trying to do a forced perspective shot on that bad boy. But anyway, I told you what this beer is now, so you needn't have to worry. Right, I'm really looking forward to this one actually. Cheers and beers, guys. If you want to help me out, click like to this video. It really does help me out. Um, and I noticed my likes have been going up a little bit. And now they, they, they can't, last couple of videos, I haven't got my, many likes. I don't know why. Maybe it's the weekend. Maybe you didn't like the beer. Who knows? So I'm going to try and play it straight today. And uh, yeah, a bit cloudy. Um, but yeah, nice. Cheers and beers. Ne <coughs> oh God! Wow. Where did that come from? I was going to say there's loads of resinous stuff on there, and definitely in the old school kind of. Uh, oh God! What is going on between belching and hiccuping and all sorts of wrongness? Wow. <sighs> And that wasn't a amazing sip. Look, I mean, it was only that much. My God, I'm a I'm getting allergic to beer. What am I gonna do? Oh my God. <laughs> but yes, resin all the way, my dudes. Um, yeah, this is definitely more of a kind of West Coast style. Um, be interesting to see what the IBUs are because there was like unbelievable, like wow. I'm. Imagining that there is citra in here, but when I was walking around their uh, brewery, especially in the stock room out the back, I did see that they had quite a big stockpile of centennial hops too. Um, but it could be something else like uh, Columbus or something along those lines. Because I'm not getting that full on. I usually get that bubble gummy thing. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get a little bit, but I, I think there might be a little bit of centennial in here. And a little bit of sweetness, which is nice. And that's another telltale sign that the, uh, uh, <coughs> the malt in here is um, crystal. I said that's quite dark, at least crystal 60. Maybe a little bit darker than that, crystal 80 or something. Oh, it's a Monday debut. It's a Monday. My head is not on correctly. Right, hopefully it won't hiccup. That was a worrying sign. Let's see see what happens. Eh? Mm, lovely. It is very resinous, um, quite piney, but there is some citrus in the background. I'm trying to find 
that bubble gummy thing, which is the giveaway from me. Like everyone tastes things slightly differently, but Centennial has that bubble gummy kind of thing um, that I usually get. And uh, yeah, not 100% sure what the hops are in this bad boy. We are getting a bit of lacing on here, which is nice to see. That uh, top one is a bit weak. And look at the head. The head is just like a ring on the uh, on the beer now. Um, yeah, unfortunately. But then sometimes that's what happens. Um, well, number one, when you chill a beer down, it holds the carbon dioxide um, within the liquid. But also, and I have chilled this down uh, for a couple of days, um, but also slightly stronger beers. And this isn't superbly strong. I get that. It's not an imperial an imperial stout or a deeper or teeper or one of those crazy ones uh, imperial ipa <laughs> rubbish um <laughs> but uh yeah slightly stronger beers beers especially that are over six percent on the abv sometimes you don't get so much head oh the other thing is if you put a lot of hops in and there's loads of oil in and that's probably what's happened here uh, the hop oils in suspension sort of somehow lubricate the side of the glass um, and it causes uh, lack of head. Um, so that's why some people put a bit of uh, dextrin or maltodextrin or multi, uh, multi stuff in there just to get a bit more head retention. Um, but if this is a West Coast style, um, I'm not surprised that it doesn't have oats in it. Wheat, mm, maybe. A little pinch of wheat in there. Um, that's maybe slightly more unusual. Um, but yeah, if you do that, obviously you're up in your head retention, but it's a lot more cloudy, a lot more kind of creamy. That's not what this is about. This is about a hot bomb, a resinous bad boy. It's doing quite well so far. Wow. Superbly bitter. Really nice. I'm liking that at all. There we go. We have from the wave six and a half west coast on a west side. Come on, my dude. There we go. West coast IPA. Ah, actually, I just had a, a thought. Um, Graves End is that on the west coast on the west side of the Medway I think it is you know um, that might be why uh, they've said that um, it's just down the road from the Ebbs Fleet so I'm, I'm thinking maybe it is on the west coast on the west west coast um, of the bridge which is um, yeah why they're called Iron Pier um, hmm be interesting interesting to see anyway guys hopefully you've enjoyed this video um there will be more videos no more iron pier at the moment but you never know i might be able to get some more of them they're quite nice and lovely bunch of guys as i've said many times i usually say lovely guys when when i get given some free beers um and they looked after us at the tap room I did buy some as well don't get me wrong i bought that i bought this one today but uh, they did give us some a lovely, lovely, um, yeah, cast iron stout in two forms. We got to taste some yeast because they use a house yeast there. So, um, yeah, me and Chris uh, definitely uh, <laughs> ate some of the yeast. I know that sounds completely crazy, but um, don't knock it until you've tried it. That's all I can say. Anyway, guys, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And I'll be back, I'm sure it'll be tomorrow, with another lovely beer review. Oh, fuck me, up the arse.